Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. In this video we'll take a look at this 3.2 inch LCD display from IC Station. It's a 320 by 240 pixel uh, color LCD screen and it has a uh, touch screen also. It uh, comes with an SD card reader although we will not be looking at the card reader today but we will be trying out the display and the touchscreen. As you can see on the back here there's quite a lot of connections. There's a 40 pin header here and only a few pins are not used. If you compare that to your standard 16x2 character LCD display you can see that it's quite a lot more. But it is also a much more capable display and if you use the libraries for Arduino that has already been made it's actually not that hard to use it. And that's also what we will be using today. But if we take a closer look, you can see most of the pins are actually used for data. The DB0 through to DB15 are the data pins for the display. We have VCC and ground here. We have a reset, write and read. I believe they are. And we have a chip select and... Uh, that's probably about it for the display. The pins with a T underscore is for the touch screen and the ones with SD underscore is of course for the SD card. And then we have a pin for the backlight. Uh, you can give it 3.3 volts or you can use a PWM to control it if you want to be able to vary the brightness. Also I should probably mention that the entire interface here runs on 3.3 volts. Uh, so the Arduino Dewey is a good choice because it runs 3.3 volts and it's a much more capable processor than on the Mega for example. That said though you can get shields for the Arduino Uno and Mega uh, so you can use this with them. They will have uh, inline resistors to limit the current and a regulator to regulate down to 3.3 volts. Anyway, I wired this up to test it and I didn't bother to unplug all the wires uh, again because there's quite a lot of them. But we will take a look at uh, how to connect these when we look at the software. Which I think we might just do now. So to test this display I've been using the UTFT and UTouch libraries made by Henning Carlson and you can find them at rinkydinkelectronics.com you get the link right there. Or you can just search for UTFT on Google. That will take you straight to his website. And once you have downloaded the libraries, you just unzip them into your libraries folder in your Arduino folder. You can see I have them here, UTFT and UTouch. Once you have done that, uh, you can restart your Arduino software. And when you go to File and Examples, you will find some examples in here. I of course used the one for uh, 320 by 240 pixels. And let's try and upload that to the Arduino Dewey so we can see what it does. But actually before we do that, um, if you go to the UTFT uh, library and you go to documentation and the UTFT requirements, that's where you find the pinout. And you can see here for the Arduino Mega and Dewey, you just connect the pins like this. And they will be labeled both on the display and uh, in here. So it's just to connect wires. Um, that should be fairly easy. And for the touch screen, you can actually set the pins uh, individually. So you don't have to follow any uh, specific pin out. But we'll get back to that. It takes quite a long time to write the sketch to an Arduino Dewey for some reason. Even if it's a small program. Uh, but it looks like it worked. You can see we have some thing on the screen here. Let's just remove the plastic here. So I'm trying to avoid any reflections but it's not that easy. <laughs> But you can see the display is nice and crisp. It's uh, the pixels are very sharp, and uh, 
the colors are quite good actually. It's also okay if you tilt it this way. If the yeah, it actually doesn't look that good on the camera, but yeah, you can see it's well, it gets a little bit dim on the camera, but it actually uh, doesn't do that in real life. Oops, that was just me uh, messing with some of the connections here. <laughs> I'll just reset it. But if we do it this way, though. Yeah, that doesn't show up either. But in real life, when you look at it and chill it up and down, yeah, you can see it there. It messes with the colors. But the other way is good. So that was the demo for the screen. And uh, now we'll take a look at the, uh, the touch screen. I'm uploading the example called Quick Paint. Uh, that's simply just uh, you can just paint stuff on the screen. I think this is what best uh, shows the resolution of it. If we take a very tiny point, you can see. The resolution of the touch screen is actually much better than I expected. I think it's actually one to one with the display resolution at least so you can uh, you can actually select any pixel on the screen. Of course that would require the calibration of the touch screen to be exact but <laughs> which by default it is not if you can see I if I uh, touch it with a pin here you can see it's slightly off just on top of the pin. It is not a capacitive screen though so everything will work. Your fingernails also and uh, a pen or something. You just have to be careful not to scratch the screen of course. So I must say it's some really nice examples that uh, Henning has made uh, for these displays. His UGFT library works with a lot of different displays by the way. Uh, I don't know about the touch um, whether or not that works with uh, any display. If we take a look at the UTFT program here you can see some of the function names and you can also find this in the documentation of course. But it's fairly easy to use. You can see we can set a color and then we can fill a rectangle from XY to XY and that will make a rectangle on the screen from these coordinates to these coordinates of course with that color. And it will remember the color, so unless you change it. You can see here he changes the color and makes a new rectangle. And he sets a new color. And he sets a back color. And this back color is for the background on printed text. And then you can see here to print text, you use the print. And then you just give it a string. And you tell it um, the coordinates also. Instead of this center one, you can just give it the X and Y coordinates from where you want it to start. And he also has a function to set the font, by the way. You can choose between small font and big font. There might be others, I don't know, actually. I just uh, tried those two. So I just went and made my own little piece of code here to demonstrate how easy the display is to use, actually. Uh, I just modified the the U-Touch button test. We create a UTFT object, uh, my GLCD, and uh, a U-Touch object, my touch, and these are the the pin numbers for the touch. You can find the, the pin names in the H file if you look at the U-Touch library or in the documentation I'm sure. Then we get an extern variable, uh, the big font. We create some variables, an X and a Y, a red, green, blue, and an update display boolean. In the setup, we run the initialize uh, functions for the LCD and the touch. We clear the screen, and uh, we set the precision to medium, 
I think there's three different positions for the touchscreen, a low, medium and high. He says in the documentation that uh, the lower precision you take, the less resources uh, the library requires, but I haven't looked further into it than that. Then we set the font to a big font, and we set a background color for the text. Then we go to the loop. We check if we have to update the display. If we have to, we uh, set a color from the uh, red, green, blue values uh, we initialized before. Then we fill a rectangle, basically the entire screen, as you can see. Then we make a new rectangle with a fixed color. So 100 red, 100 green, and 200 blue. And then we make that uh, in the center of the screen. I just made a margin of 100 pixels uh, all the way around it. And then we print some text. Uh, first we set a color, the same color as we uh, drew the back rectangle with. And then we write color in the center of the screen. And then after we have done all that we set update display to false, because if we don't have any changes we don't have to update it. Then we read the touch data. We check if anything is available, and if it is, we will read it, and we will get the x and the y, and we will store them in our x and y variables. Then we check if the user touched within the uh, this rectangle, and if he did, we will uh, set the red, green, and blue colors to random values, and we will update the display. This uh, modulus 255 will uh, take the remainder of the random number divided by 255. So that will uh, give us a random value from 0 to 254, I think, actually. Uh, so we should probably set it to 256. But it doesn't matter. So we'll try and upload this and see if it works. And you can see we get the gray screen here with our blue rectangle in the middle. And if we press it, oops, we get a new random color for the background. As you can see I didn't put anything to check if we hold down the button so if we do that it'll just continuously give us a new random color. And if we press outside that rectangle it doesn't do anything. So at least that part worked. Oh well, that's almost the same as the rectangle itself. So, as you can see, it's very easy to use these uh, libraries and the LCD screen here. It took me about four or five minutes to just uh, make this simple little program. And I did basically just uh, copy and paste the functions from the example. So, I think that's it for this video. And I'll definitely be using this display in a future project. So, you can look forward to that. There will, of course, be a link to this display at IC Station uh, down in the description. So you can find it there. And if you liked the video, please give it the thumbs up. And I will see you soon for the next one. See ya.